They said it was impossible. They said it couldn't be fixed. Until one man rose to the occasion and said, yeah, it could probably be fixed. Um, but you know, it would depend on a couple things. I'd have to order some parts, but yeah, I might be able to fix it for sure. Um, just send it on over. And then he set out to fix it. Hey there, this is Independence Guitar. Today we're going to try and rescue this instrument. But first, if you're new here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, check the bell if you actually want to receive notifications, and help me out by liking and sharing the video. So this is a Fender Gemini 4. This is a Korean-made uh, acoustic import Fender, and it is a very budget-friendly guitar. Um, they stopped making them back in the 90s because apparently they were pretty universally hated. So when I saw this guitar, I kind of thought that it would be beyond saving. But upon closer look, I found that I really like the, uh, the look of the wood on the fretboard. And the fretwork itself is really nice. So I kind of thought to myself that if I could save the integrity of it, um, that this guitar might actually be a really great and comfortable guitar to play. So anyway, let's get it to the workbench and see what we can do. Okay, so the main things that are wrong with this guitar are the tuning keys and the nut. The tuning keys are all busted to hell and the nut is cracked by the low E string and pretty much done for. So since I'm kind of fixing this guitar uh, for a friend of the family uh, and on a budget, uh, I got parts um, from Music Lily. You can find them on Reverb and Amazon. Uh, and I believe they have their own site as well. Um, these tuning keys only set me back about 15, 20 bucks and uh, they may be cheap, but they will do the job for uh, what I need done. And for the nut, I got a black tusk from Graph Tech. And uh, this has lately been like my favorite go-to uh, replacement nut for pretty much any guitar. Um, they sell them in all different uh, types and sizes and styles. So if you need a replacement nut, go on there and check them out. Um, pretty cool. All right, so let's go ahead and get the strings off and get started. Okay, now that I got the strings off, I'm gonna go ahead and get her cleaned up. And to do that, I'm gonna be using uh, Music Nomad. Uh, this is a cleaner and polish all-in-one. So uh, let's get that done and then I'm going to go ahead and use the Dunlop fretboard conditioner uh, and get her nice and shiny and then start putting the new parts on. So uh, let's get to it. Okay, so here they've actually tried to use tape to uh, sort of, I guess, patch up this hole which in my opinion is kind of unnecessary uh, I mean this is just kind of my opinion but when it comes to damage like this um, I just kind of feel like uh, it just becomes kind of part of the guitar you know if it doesn't affect the playability or the sound then it's just uh, a scar and a memory for the guitar kind of gives it some character so I'm gonna go ahead and peel this tape off Okay, I got her uh, all wiped down and cleaned up and she looks a lot better. So now I'm going to go ahead and condition the fretboard and uh, polish the frets and then we're going to get to the repairs. Okay, fretboard is polished, now to polish the frets. Okay, now that I got the fretboard all polished and everything is cleaned up, I'm going to go ahead and take off what is left of the tuning keys. They've all pretty much 
fallen out on their own except for these two. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these screws out, remove the tuning keys. Okay, and now we have the guitar ready for our tuning keys. Okay, so to get the guitar ready for the tuning keys, I'm going to make my little concoction here, which just consists of toothpicks and wood glue. If you ever do this and the wood glue doesn't seem to set right or adhere, um, you can always use uh, epoxy. This will definitely get purchased, but this is kind of the nuclear option. So. All you want to do is just get uh, a piece of paper or something that you can dump glue on and uh, not have to worry about it. Okay, so first thing, we are going to open up our toothpicks here. Just gonna need a couple. Once you got a couple toothpicks, two or three of them, uh, you will then need uh, either scissors or some kind of wire cutters, just anything that you can chop this up into bits. Okay, so I filled up all the holes that are a problem as far as migration goes. Um, the screws had burrowed to where the holes are too wide for a new screw to even fit in there. Um, and for the ones that I think are still good and will hold a screw, I'm going to go ahead and put just wood glue, no toothpicks, but uh, just wood glue down inside the holes so that the new screw has some kind of, I guess, um, backup purchase once I put the new screws in there. So now that the wood glue and toothpicks are dry, I'm going to go ahead and uh, line up these tuning keys and get them screwed in. Okay, to get the nut off, since uh, it's not actually set in the neck, it's on the end, I'm just taking a heavy screwdriver, I'm going to wrap it in a towel to protect the fretboard, and I'm going to aim it right at the nut and give it a tap. Okay, so the tuning keys are installed, uh, the nut is off, and now it is time to put the new nut in and we are going to do this by just using a dab of super glue on the bottom very small amount and then on the very bottom in the back and we just get one shot and perfect Ooh, that looks beautiful And now to let that set and dry, and then we'll go ahead and restring it and see how it sounds. Okay, so it's been a day, and uh, all of the glue is dry and set. So I am going ahead and putting the strings on, and we're going to see how it turned out.
Okay, so the guitar went from junk to an actual really comfortable and great sounding guitar. So um, I will call this a success. Thank you for stopping by and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.